So glad to have you here as we continue on this Thursday morning. It is October 24th, Chattanooga Comic Con coming up right around the corner. And we got to spend a few minutes with one of the stars of Comic Con earlier. Check him out, folks. This is the one, the only. This is, um, well, I'm just amazed that you agreed to come back. Patrick Fabian. Good well, to see you, sir. Thanks for having me back. Jim. Um, tell us what you're going to be doing at Comic Con. And then we're, I'll tell you what, if you think it's a familiar face, but you're wondering, yeah, yeah he's the one that was on Better Call Saul. He played the, cow, the uh, character of Howard Hamlin. And what a devious edge you brought to that character. Well, thanks. You know, uh, a tip of the hat to all the writers. That was created by the creators of uh, Breaking Bad, obviously, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. And, and those writers gave Howard uh, a lot of great things to do over six seasons. They also gave him the best suits on television, <laughs> which doesn't hurt. <laughs> you were telling me that earlier. You were literally the best dress character on Better Call Saul. Yes, uh, the joke that I like to say, which is not a joke, I don't think, is that they paid more money for the suits than they did for the guy in them. You know? <laughs> but they really help. You know, that sort of thing really helps a, 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 an actor. You know, what you wear, the shoes and the clothing that you wear, uh, really informs how you behave. And I was saying to Chip off, off camera, every time I'd walk into a scene, I'd have that little mental thing in my brain going, oh, I'm wearing more than you make in a year. <laughs> and when you're wearing something like that, and you hear the director going, lights, camera, action. What's going through your mind between lights and action? Um, it's never gone away for me. There's always the nerves. There's always that sense of like, uh, I'm going to get found out. It's like just before the curtain goes up in, in a play, you're like, <gasps> and then you go. And then you give over to the rehearsal you've done, you give over to the things that you do, you know, the craft that you've been working at. But I always get nervous. First day of school jitters before every scene. Butterflies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because it's exciting and it's fun. You know, it's a privilege to be able to do something like that. Sure. I don't try and take it for granted because, you know, it's not a guarantee you get to do it. And you've been doing this for well over 30 years now. And yeah. despite being on Better Call Saul for all those years, your resume, your IMDb sheet, it is extensive. You go back a ways. I do go back a ways. As a matter of fact, my, my parents thought that I, I peaked in 1994 when I did an episode of Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> <laughs> For the younger viewers out there, Murder, She Wrote was a very, anyways. <laughs> Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury. How can you not know her? Were you in a scene with her? I was. What was it like to work? Because she was Broadway royalty before she went to that particular series. What was it like working with somebody who is a bona fide legend? It was one of my first jobs. I was very green. And um, Angela Lansbury uh, was such a class act and, and was one of those beacons that you saw how you could behave if you were number one in the call sheet, if you were the star of the show. She sat right next to me in between scenes. She didn't have a trailer off somewhere else. And she chit-chatted with me. And I remember talking to her and, uh, you know, saying, saying precocious things like, so what's your biggest disappointment in your career? <laughs> you know, I'm like 24. Right. And she answered me. She answered me without missing a beat. She goes, well, when they overlooked me for MAME in the movie, because Lucille Ball got that. She goes, I originated the role. But they gave it to Lucy, of course, because she was a star. Another first lady of the entertainment world you worked with, Betty White. Yeah, Betty White, fantastic. Well, I grew up watching her on Password. I just thought she was Me the too. funny lady on Password. Yeah. Um, of course, I grew to realize exactly what a long and incredible career she had. So I got to work on Hot in Cleveland with her. Right. And um, I got to watch her, I got to watch a master work. She had the audience eating out of the palm of her hand. She would make mistakes, and it wouldn't matter. Matter of fact, if she made mistakes in the thing, the audience would love her even more. They were on her side so much, so intrinsically, and it's one of those, one of those magic things. You can't yeah. manufacture it. She just had it. And out of those masters you've worked with, and that's a long list, you take something away from each of them and put it in your toolbox. Well, you try to. I mean, you try to steal from the best and you try and uh, do the things that uh, inspired you. You know, I worked with Bill Pullman. I worked with Angela Lansbury. I worked with Bob Odenkirk. And all three of those people had uh, great empathy and they led uh, with great character. And it's a tough business. As you know, the television business is sure. tough and there's a lot of constraints and a lot of things working against you to behave in a good fashion, and they all did. I want to get your thoughts on a few of the folks who are notable from around here for being in your line of work. Yes. Just initial thoughts. Samuel L. Jackson, Chattanooga uh, native. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. <laughs> a massive talent. A towering presence, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, I've never had a chance to work with him or actually see him, but I love the fact that maybe the possibility is always out there. Leslie Jordan. Uh, another. Oh, Leslie. 
Yeah. Oh, I've worked with Leslie. One of the first one of the first jobs I ever did was a thing called Bodies of Evidence, which was Lee Horsley's detective show with a young up and comer yeah. named George Clooney. Wow. And Leslie Jordan was on that, and Leslie took me aside and just told me story after story and had me in stitches. That was really fun. Dennis Haskins. Dennis Haskins, I've been confused for again and again and again because <laughs> you did. he was on Saved by the Bell and I was on Saved by the Bell the college years. Right. And so um, when I first started doing that, uh, since there was only a couple of those episodes, people would see me in the airport and they'd shout out, Mr. Belding. And I'm like, I'm not Mr. I'm not, How do you confuse I'm not, I'm not Patrick Mr. Belding. Fabian okay, with, just, uh, let's get that clear. Dennis Haskins. Um, Jack Daniels. Uh, I, Never I, mind, we're running yeah, out of time. You know, That's probably it's, it's a morning show. Uh, tell me something most people don't know about Patrick Fabian. Oh, my. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I've done the Malibu Triathlon 14 years in a row. What? The triathlon? Yeah, yeah, it's a sprint triathlon. Don't get excited. It was, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's amazing. I wish we had more time to uh, spend together, and hopefully we'll, we'll see you back here in Chattanooga further down the road. You can catch the very talented, the very affable, Patrick Fabian at Chattanooga Comic Con this weekend. You're going to be signing autographs, taking pictures, doing the whole nine yards, right? Yep. Come down to the convention center, 10 o'clock on Saturday, 11 o'clock on Sunday. We'll be there all day long. You, my friend, are a class act. Come back anytime. Thank you, man. We hope you'll come back on the other side of this commercial break for more Let's Chat.